don't know if we'll succeed in making an instant kill build using Shatter Strike, but what I do know at the moment is that this build is actually really cool and really, really strong at the same time. In comparison to some of the previous builds that I've taken towards the end game, this character has absolutely no problem destroying the end of the campaign bosses like Lagon, the giant octopus or Majasa. I might not have the damage output at the moment to kill them very quickly, however, as far as survivability goes, I had no problem fighting them, and on the other hand, I wasn't even worried about dying while fighting them. So that sounds pretty good, if this is something you were struggling with and maybe you were looking for a build which felt easier for you, or not easier, but It'll, it gave you the survivability necessary for you to enjoy the endgame and see what it has to offer. This is the build for you. Good morning everyone and welcome back to the Two-Headed World Gaming Channel last epoch and the Spellblade with the Shadow Strike build. Where I'm starting to doubt more and more that I'll be able to make an instant kill build, but I'm still focused on that idea. But at the same time, this one is really fun to play. You have to try it out. If you like how it looks, if you like the way the cold damage or the shattering strike looks, try it out. You're going to enjoy it. It's, it's good at clearing maps, especially when there are a lot of mobs. Very easy to pretty much cut through them and shattering them into pieces. At the same time, the amount of defensive layers that I'm running with at the moment is still really good. I don't have crazy ward generation and retention, but add on top of that some physical resistance, a bunch of armor and a bit of a block chance using the shield. And I don't have to worry about surviving that often. I think as I'm going further and further through the maps, of course, that will have to change. I will have to spec into resistances a bit more, probably get a bit more health or a bit more ward generation. Of course, that is always the case. You always push further and further into the game and you'll have to make changes. But even on fighting bosses, like I just showed you a few moments earlier, I have no problems fighting them. I was not worried for one second about dying, and even if the bosses were doing like these super attacks, having Surge as a traversal skill to get out of the way of those attacks has been very very useful. I guess a bit of prior knowledge also has helped, but overall I really had very little problems on this particular run. The only downside, at least until this episode, is that I don't have high amounts of damage, and thus defeating a boss does take a while. That is the only downside, however, with everything that I'm going to invest into today, I think that story will change. But I would still like to show off... I would like to show off this build, how it feels at the moment, clearing one of these maps. Let's go with this one. I'm pretty much farming at this moment, and I'm going to show you. I'm farming monoliths in order to get the blessings which improve the character. We have to defeat 16 waves of enemies, perfect. I feel like this is a good challenge. And as you can see, when you're looking at ward generation, I am doing very well there. I'm also taking a lot of damage with each hit. That's where some upgrades today for extra armor and maybe some resistances or things like that will help. But overall, clearing maps, so easy, so fun. I'm gaining experience at a good level. And you have to try it out. Really, try it. You're not going to lose anything out of it. I believe that what you can do is that you can even swap. If you don't like the ice damage, I think you can go with another element. You can go with fire, you can go with something else. By the way, you can sit still like this and just attack nearby enemies. I am used to holding down the left mouth button and have like these small steps forward. Because it I it feels to me like it's useful against bosses, right? As they start to they prepare to do an attack, if you keep doing this while you're also damaging them, you get pretty close to avoiding their attack. So it's in a sense getting me closer to avoiding attacks than before. This was, of course, 
necessary when I was using the Close Combat Spellcaster, the Shaman, because I didn't have traversal skills. On this occasion, maybe I wouldn't need it as much anymore, just because I do have a traversal skill, I do have Surge. So I can get out of the way of the attacks, of the bigger attacks, quite often. Still, this is the build. As you can see, some of the tougher enemies... Well, they are tougher. They take a while longer to, to be defeated. If you see orange text, that means that it's a critical strike. It's a item which has critical strike. I put a filter on it. So I'm trying to find items that would correspond to that. Of course, I could make it better, but not for right now. So there you go. I've just showed you what the power of this build is. And we're going to upgrade it. We're going to push it even further, which is great. Brother Serpent, I don't care. Occultist Crystal Sword. Okay, this might be good. But we shall see. Let's start with passives. Because I feel like on passives is very easy. I'm going to invest another point here in Gortas Razor. And now we're going to go with Blade Weaver. If you don't remember from the last episode, when you use a melee attack that costs less than 10 mana, you gain a stack of Blade Weaving. When you use a melee attack that costs 10 or more mana, the stacks are consumed. And the attack deals 15% more elemental damage per stack consumed. I have Mana Surge, or Mana Strike here, which has zero mana cost. I'm using this in order to get back the mana, or to regenerate mana. And then I'm jumping into Shatter Strike, which, of course, it doesn't have zero cost. It has zero cost because I have a buff which reduces the cost for it. But it has a 14 mana cost, so that effect will, will be applying over here. And I'm thinking of investing one point in order to get one blade weaving for the moment for each mana strike i'm generally doing about three to four mana strikes so that would be 60 percent more damage whenever we're doing the first shatter strike so overall that sounds pretty good to me and then we're going to go here and we're going to invest 10 points into the Knowledge of Destruction, increase Critical Strike Chance by 7% per point, and Critical Multiplier by 3% per point. I am hoping that this is not just an increase on the base, and it's actually a flat 7%, but I don't know if that is the case. Still, we are at 8% now, right? So let's see, 1 point. We're at 9%. Okay, so it is just a percentage. We will have to use weapons as a base for this. So I'm going to push this 10 levels. We are at 12% right now, but we're going to start focusing the items that we're picking to have critical strike chance and thus get it as close to 100% as possible. And we'll see how that works. As far as active skills. Let's see, for the Elemental Nova, where would we want to go next? I think Ice Nova has a higher chance to freeze enemies. We'll invest two more points there. Triomantic Fragility. Elemental Nova costs less mana, but you take increased cold damage if you have cast Elemental Nova in the past four seconds. I don't really care about that. Probably more area of effect and damage could be great. Going for some increased critical chance could also be really good. But I would be adding Fire Nova. Still, this means... It says that it enables Fire Nova, which deals 11% more damage than other Elemental Nova types. All Elemental Nova hits deal more damage. And on the description, it says that all types of Elemental Nova that you have enabled have an equal chance to be cast. So if I'm activating Fire Nova, then it's going to alternate or is going to roll for either throwing in an Ice Nova or for throwing in a Fire Nova. And for the moment, I think I am pretty much committed to going Ice. That is what I would say. And so I'm going to go for extra damage and area of effect. I might be respecting that in the future, but not right now. Over on this side... Increase projectile speed and increase damage for ice spikes, I wouldn't care for. 
I wouldn't care for mana efficiency and word gain either. A bit more on the frostbite might be good. Cold penetration with frostbite. Let's see. Increase you deal increased cold damage and are more likely to freeze enemies if you have, if you have used Shatter Strike recently. I do like that. Armor again, armor gain against Frozen. You are granted armor for four seconds after hitting a Frozen enemy. That could be good. War gain against Frozen enemies. Cold resistance on hit. Extra damage. Shatter Strike recasts after it finishes, but costs more mana and has reduced attack speed. Interesting. And Shatter Strike has increased attack speed, but cannot be used if you have a wand or two-handed weapon equipped. I like all of this. But let's start with this, with the Global Freeze Rate Multiplier. And then on the Mana Strike. Increase damage. Increase area of effect. There's not a whole lot more that I want out of this skill to, at the moment. Mana Strike additionally strikes enemies it hits with Mana Arc while you are not out of mana. Mana Arc consumes 15 mana. I don't want it to consume mana at the moment. A portion of mana gained on hit is converted to word instead, that's 25%. Could gain a bit more mana and then get this word. You deal increased damage if you have hit an enemy with mana strike recently, past 4 seconds. So we could get those huge attacks using the mana strike. I will get more speed. And then we're gonna go with more area of effect. I think we'll stay with that for the moment. On this side. Increased melee elemental damage sounds good. And dealing extra elemental damage per 1% missing mana also sounds really good. When we activate it, having increased melee attack speed, great. So I have 3 points at the moment. Hmm... Let's do increase melee cold damage. Let's focus on this one. That's 100% more damage. And we shall see how that reacts. Freeze rate multiplier per 1% crit chance. I like that. Spell damage per 3 melee damage. 1 per point. Could be good. Frostbite chance. Frostclaw deals more damage. And it seeds have a chance to inflict frostbite. Increase element duration. You have a chance to cast Elemental Nova when Frostclaw's projectiles reach the target. This consumes mana equal to the Elemental Nova's mana cost and cannot trigger if you are out of mana. Shall we do more? There is a chance that we'll freeze enemies whenever, wherever this jumps to. So that is also a really cool effect there. That could help us a lot. You have a chance to cast Ice Barrage in the target direction when you cast Frost Claw. This consumes mana equal to the Ice Barrage's mana cost. I love these combos. They sound so good to me. Gain a stack of Frozen Sleeper every second up to a maximum. When you cast Frost Claw, it consumes all stacks to gain cold penetration per stack and release an Ice Spiral for each stack. An Ice Spiral is... Release a barrage of frost arrows that travel in a spiral. Each enemy can only be hit at most once every 0.3 seconds. The hits have a freeze rate of 70 and added spell damage applies to them at 175% effectiveness. For each active Ice Spiral, Glacier gains increased area... Increased area and additional cold penetration and snap freeze gains area and freeze duration. Okay, we're not using any of those skills, but it's definitely another interesting thing. Let me go in this direction. Time to talk about the gear. Right now I'm running with this sword, which actually feels really strong and pretty good. 
It has 39 melee damage, 57% increased melee elemental damage, 49% increased elemental melee attack speed. And then if we have a bit of melee cold damage on the sword and some chance to ignite. Nothing is as impressive as what it has at the base level. Those multipliers to melee elemental damage and melee attack speed, which makes these attack very quickly. Because of that, I am moving from 3300 and whenever I'm getting buffed on, on the attacks, I am getting to 5200, right? Whenever this enchant sword activates. I was looking at different weapons. I also saw this scepter, which has some base melee cold damage and spell cold damage, plus freeze rate multiplier built in, some extra elemental damage, critical strike chance, increased stun chance. Overall, definitely a, an interesting weapon and good. However, because it has reduced speed and it doesn't have that multiplier to elemental melee attack speed, it is going down in damage. It definitely feels a lot slower. I've also been looking, for example, at this two-handed sword, which has a built-in melee critical strike multiplier. I also have the affixes melee critical strike chance, increased cold damage, stun with melee attacks. So, in a way, long term, I'm thinking that I might even want to try out a two-handed sword. But for right now, I'm definitely not getting as much power as I am with this one-handed sword. But still, it could work pretty well in the near future to throw one of these two-handed weapons on. We shall see. One thing at a time for the moment. I also have found this idol where we get 30% increased chance to cast fire aura on crit, which could work good, well for us. This one has a 6% chance to cast elemental nova when hit, so when we're taking damage. 29% chance to apply frostbite with cold skills. I would like to keep this going forward. But I think I will keep things as they are. Maybe I'll put the chance to cast Fire Aura on Crit for the moment and we'll see how that works. I've got these boots which look pretty good. Not the craziest in the world but we are getting 1.5 seconds of Frenzy after you use a Traversal skill. Increase effect of Frenzy on you. So I am thinking that if I use a Traversal skill maybe I'm getting a huge boost in damage. Yeah, about 400 more damage. Now, I don't know if 1.5 is enough. But still, I think I'm also getting a bit more armor there. So, I will keep those boots for now. I found this helmet, 96 armor and 69% increased critical strike chance. I like the idea. Plus, it's giving us a point to enchant weapon and increase melee elemental damage. Has a few resistances, you know. I'm losing a bit of armor in the process and some critical strike avoidance. But at the end of the day, I'm thinking that going for higher critical strike chances might work well in, in what we're trying to achieve. Uh, let's see, over here, where do we want to go with this one? Since we do have an extra point, I guess I'm going to go with extra duration here. Or I could go with Frozen Sparks next. You deal additional cold and lightning damage with melee attacks for each 10 physical damage that is on your weapon. Do we have physical damage? Yeah, that 39 melee damage, that is flat. But we might want to do that. Other than this, I have a ring which I might want to, to transform into something, but not at the moment. I want to get one of these rings with increased critical strike chance and make sure that we're making it, we're crafting it in something crazy. As far as this goes, these idols, 18% chance to gain 30 ward when hit, I like that. 28% of mana spend gain as ward, I like that as well. 263 stun avoidance plus 15% elemental resistance, I like that. 30 ward on potion use and 2% chance to cast fire aura when hit. This actually might want, might replace this. Fire aura when hit rather than fire aura on crit. It could work well in our favor let's see let's remove some of these i don't have these crazy combinations where where i really feel like i need to keep some of these let's see elemental resistance overall seven percent chance to gain war 30 ward when hit i like that some physical resistance ward on potion use and eight health i don't care for 21 armor is not that impressive we're gonna throw this in. 
Is there anything else that I can do at the moment? Not much. I would like to throw a few more in. But I think just for the moment we're gonna stay with... With how it looks right now. And I'll try to puzzle it more after the episode. But there we go. That's as far as the equipment goes. And now... Let's run a map. There's a unique deer. There's idols here. Let's see how this is going to work. I'm excited. We should see a lot more criticals than we have so far. Okay, I do. Okay, I am starting to see some of those high damage numbers. Even bosses or these more rare enemies are starting to, going to go down quickly. so fast I'm enjoying this I ran a few more maps just so that we can jump quickly through quests and actually fight the boss at the end of it and see how this character feels at that power level but I also found these two uniques which sound pretty interesting to me the howl of the west wind the primalist helmet a unique wolf belt with 30% chance for wolves to retaliate with lightning strike when hit, your wolves cannot be stunned, and a lot of power with lightning strikes and things like that related to wolves. Sounds like an interesting way to make a build. And then we have Hive Mind, a rogue helmet, which I think I might want to do next. Decoy releases 8 bees when it explodes. When you hit a bee with an acid flask, it gains toxic coating. And then we have a few other stats. I think I want to make a bee. <laughs> a bee build. And this says that decoy releases 8 bees. And when you hit a bee with acid flank, it gains toxic coating. But the bee itself, it doesn't have to be from the decoy. The decoy releases some, but we can get those gloves which also summon a bunch of bees. And we might make a rogue bee build. Which sounds stupid. But it sounds so interesting at the same time. Either way, let's quickly go through this. I even gained another level, so I might want to take a look and see where I want to invest it. I actually know where I want to invest it. We're going to get more of those blade wards, or however they are called. Because there are so many names nowadays in through all these characters. Blade weaving. So we're going to get two stacks per hit. And thus when I use mana strike, I'm going to get two at a time. That's really good. Let's quickly go and clear these areas. I absolutely love how this character feels and the fact that I have a traversal skill, I feel like in this game traversal skills are, have a lot more use than I first gave them credit for. It's not just one of those things where it's optional, or it is optional, you don't have to. However, having some sort of a traversal skill or any way to move out of immediate danger yes. definitely has its uses. Which is not mind-blowing theory, it's not like you you couldn't think about this. But it's good to put it out there, just in case you were on the fence with traversal skills. Let's do Nova, and I love when those Novas spread around. It's not a 100% chance for it to happen, but when it does happen it's actually really cool, it looks good. If it looks good, and it feels good, then I don't think you really need anything else. 
maybe for a few people it might not be enough you know the people who want to push like those really high numbers but generally speaking that is happening in the end game and there's nothing at the moment which tells me that this might not be happening for this build if there was anything that I could give you a recommendation for, because you might be playing the same build and you might reach a point where you don't feel like you are as strong as I am right now. And I think one of the main things that I could do as well, and I would definitely recommend to you to do instead of going my path, is that you could go here and actually remove this knowledge of destruction just because that 70% to critical strike chance is great, but it's an increase. So as long as you don't have a lot of critical strike chance as a flat modifier, having that 70% chance gain by investing 10 passive skill points, I don't think at the moment, as I've been running through these maps, it makes much sense. Right? And in, if we're trying to look for proofs of this theory, it's like, how many times do we see those yellow numbers? Like, it does happen when there is a mob, like we see it about two, three times. But it doesn't happen often enough to where we can say it was definitely the right choice. Like, what is the difference between 15% and 8% which was before it, right? Not, not much, I would say. But we shall see it on the boss. We shall see how often we see those yellow numbers on the boss. If, and if we see them often enough, then we might consider that to be the right choice. But imagine taking those 10 points from here, from Knowledge of Destruction, and throwing it into this one, for example, get Ward Retention and Health. That could make me a whole lot more tanky. I could throw it in max blade weaving stacks, which would give me like this huge boost to elemental damage on the next attack. More ward generation, definitely. I could even go into dual wielding. Two swords with very quick attacks. Mm, I think we might want to try it, at least test it out to see how it feels. But as far as other modifiers, like what could we do? Elemental Burst Chance, that could be good. Increase Elemental Burst Damage. More Cold Damage for Cold Melee Attacks. Chance to gain Mana. Melee Cold Damage. Once again, with but this one is not that special. Oh, maybe there are not as many choices as I thought, at least not on the offensive side. But I could invest points here. 7% increased cold damage and 7% increased chill chance with cold skills. Plus, nearby enemies are chilled by 2 points. Maybe that's what we want to do next. Maybe. Not gonna do it just yet. But maybe that's something that we might want to do. Now look at this, with the war generation that I have, that hit was pretty bad there, but it didn't kill me. If before I would get instantly killed by such an attack, now it's not the case anymore. However, a traversal skill there can help us get out of danger. Look for the yellow numbers. As you can see, it's not crazy. It's happening every so ever so often, but it's not enough to where I feel, hey, this is really good. This is definitely the right choice. So let me do something else. We're testing it out. We're going to do this. We're going to learn together. And if I go over here at the end of time, I will respect. I will respect the critical strikes. We're removing those points. Hello, traveler. Ten points. 
And we are going with freeze rate multiplier. Let's see. Freeze rate multiplier increase ice damage. When you hit an enemy with a cold skill, you chill additional nearby enemies. This effect has a 5 second cooldown. 3 points here. Ice and fire there. Mage Floor, increase attack speed 3% per point and increase cast speed. Increase cold damage by that multiplier could be a bit more intelligent and resistance. War game per 10 health. Increase melee attack speed and worn gained. Let's get with that. And now let's go into the next map. I am super curious. I think we can even see, if we check now the Shanter Strike. Yeah, 58. What was it, like a 600 increase in damage or something like that? We're going through maps and I think we're fighting Raya. We're fighting the bird thing. I might want to maximize my shadow resistance or my void resistance. Let's see, where is void resistance? I haven't crafted pretty much anything on this equipment. Which is crazy. Void resistance. Can I go further? No, I'm, it's already at tier 5. That has been maxed out. Okay, I guess we're going with the Void Resistance that we have at the moment. I'm not going to spend any more time here. We don't have a lot of time during these episodes. I really want to get to that boss battle and show it off. Okay, now I'm starting to feel some of that extra power. Right, so the criticals weren't great. Just because I don't have another flat critical strike chance. Not yet. We might have it in the future. And if we're lucky to get some of those tier 7 modifiers that would be good too because I am heading in that direction how did I get to the faction 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 here yeah we're getting towards tier 7 fxs are twice as common well I'm hoping that once we have that going on we are going to see a lot of items which have those tier 7s. They're probably in the empowered monoliths. I feel like a kid. I think if I had this game when I was a kid, it would have been so mind blowing. Diablo 2 was a great game. I still remember it to this day. Playing it for the very first time at the friend's house. Playing with the druid. And just summoning those wolves and ravens or crows. I don't know exactly what, they're, what they are called in, in Diablo. I like turning into a werewolf. Taking down the undead. Before that there were many games which I played on MS-DOS. That's how, that's how far things have gotten since the first time I've played it. Computers weren't that widespread in Romania at the time. They were quite expensive as well. I've gotten my first computer at home in, in the fourth grade. That's when my parents could afford one. And that was such a great, I, was, I still remember being at school even. I was still at, at school and seeing my brother and my father uh, just going by the fence and I went to say hello and they said that they bought a computer and I was so excited to finally have one. Until then I used to go to internet cafes and you would pay money to, to play games, even in MS-DOS. That was good enough. That, yeah, those were the times. There were plenty of bad games back then as well, but there were so many good games also. I think just because of the amount of effort it took 
and the amount of money that people had to invest in order to put those games out there and you know make physical copies and send them overseas and things like that I believe people paid a lot more attention they were simpler in many ways but they were also they really tried to put some of the best ideas out there or tried to make it work in the best way possible. And some people made some genius moves with it, with Diablo 2 for example. Okay, final part here. I know this has been a longer episode, but I just wanted to show off how this character feels. I recommend you try it out. If you have any questions about the build, about uh, gear that I'm running with or things like that, let me know. But I feel like this game is fairly obvious in many ways. It's not as difficult to understand what I'm doing or how I'm doing it. At least not with the episodes that I've already put out. Let's see. Having a traversal skill in this battle does seem like it's... It's, it feels like cheating almost. And having war generation also means that I don't have to be too worried about my health. But the damage on the boss is definitely not. High. It, it doesn't have that huge constant damage that we had, for example, with the Cold Combat Spellcaster. And I'm sure that there are some... If we were to go with fire, for example, because one of the things which stops enemies in their tracks is the stun. As you can see it above their head, their circle. Freeze is a big part of it as well, but you can put stun on everything without investing in cold damage or anything like that. So with a bit of stun investment to stop bosses in their tracks, if you go with fire damage, which even on the Nova said that it does 11% more damage than all the other elements, if you're going on that route, and look at that, even something which would normally be an instant kill, it didn't instant kill us at this level, at level 65, with the gear that I'm running right now. So yeah, if you, I think that if you go with fire damage, you probably can get much higher numbers than with cold. But this one feels really good to me. I just like the way it looked and I felt like it was a good defensive layer for fighting enemies on the map. I felt like the wizard would be super squishy, but that is far from the truth. That's why I'm thinking that maybe the mechanic of the world will be slightly reworked, slightly balanced out, because it does feel slightly too, too overpowered. In comparison to just running armor... It's definitely a very, very different story. Okay, where is the boss? That was a bad hit, but we're gonna get out of it. My shadow will cover this world once more. I'm hoping that the developers will pay a lot of attention to this game because it does need it. The release is good, there is lots to do here, but it does need more love and I'm hoping that they're putting a lot of effort in their first season. They said that they're putting together in the first season they want to bring a lot of pinnacle bosses or at least bring some pinnacle bosses bring a challenge and i would like them to, to bring a lot of improvements because if there's something that i've learned recently of course with the release of diablo 4 is that people are open to, to letting developers expand on a game that they've released they've just released especially for an indie developer right for a small studio However, they will not have the same amount of goodwill for long. Diablo 4 might be a good studio, a big studio, and maybe people have more expectations from them. But if we think about Season 1, people enjoyed the basic experience and they just waited for the season. Season 1 was really bad. Season 2 was good, but it didn't offer 
a lot more than just the season being good. And then season 3 was absolutely awful. And now they're making season the next season where it looks like they're improving a bunch of things. And it's looking pretty good in the PTR. Hoping for the best for them and for us. However, people's goodwill and the feelings of people, generally speaking, they're not going to last. Even if there will always be people playing it and even if I return to games which aren't great, the amount of hours I'm investing in a game definitely depends on how good it is, how good the feeling is overall and how much the community likes it. Because if the community really likes a game like Path of Exile, whenever I have no idea what I should be doing in Path of Exile, I can always look at someone else's build and say, hey, I actually want to play that. So that's how I started playing Path of Exile all over again, even though I had no idea what to do beforehand. And in this situation, I feel like Last Epoch has the chance to turn into the same sort of thing. But the developers will really have to flesh it out. And there we go. This time, fighting this boss, not a problem. What should I be getting? Void resistance, shred void resistance, 7, 1.7 of spell damage leech death health. I don't really need any of these. I guess we're gonna go with some Void Resistance just so we have it capped out and I don't have to worry about anything else. Okay, well, that's about it for this episode. Just so you know, what I'm gonna do going forward is that I'm going to start farming this right side. So, and I'm thinking of farming this area again, just so we can change this modifier. And I'm going to show you on the panel here what I'm looking for. So, each one of these areas, each one of these monoliths will unlock one of these modifiers. You have a chance to pick between three of them, uh, depending on the area that you are farming. In the black sun, like on the first row, the first two I don't really care about, the last row with the black sun. I believe that from that one, I either want critical strike chance, maybe that's where I want to want to begin with, if I really want to scale up that critical strike chance, or maybe I am going to go with something like some extra health, maybe some ward on kill, that also sounds pretty good. In the second row, over there on the second column, we have ending the storm, that's where I would like definitely to get some cold damage, Sounds like a really good idea. Or freeze rate multiplier. I would really like that as well. Chance to gain ward on hit. I think since I'm getting since I have good defenses, I would really want to, to get a lot of extra damage. So either cold damage or a chance to freeze enemies for that instant kill is the way to go. Then in the second row, the last column in the reign of dragons. I am thinking that the only thing which might apply is either or resistances. Or critical strike avoidance. Critical strike avoidance sounds better to me, but we shall see. Then in the last row, in the middle column, right, the Age of Winter, I believe that there either Shred Cold Resistance could offer us a lot of damage bonus, bonus damage, and chance to apply Frostbite, maybe, but freeze rates per chill stack, that could be absolutely great for us. Increasing that chance to freeze even further. Overall, I believe those are the choices. Once again, we have armor and blood chance at the bottom, but I don't know. I don't see it. I don't see it at the moment. I don't see us needing defenses, but maybe the story changes later on. Then in the last one, Spirit of Fire. This one is a bit more difficult. I'm thinking chance to apply frailty could be great. Frailty reduces the damage that the enemy does. So that could work well with us. And then flat armor, that is the other thing which I'm pretty much looking for. But that is going to have to be it. This was a pretty long episode. I hope you have enjoyed it. I hope you have learned something from it. And that at least it gave you an idea of trying this build out. If you did, you like what's happening. If you like the build, do consider leaving a like. I would appreciate it a lot. You know how it helps me grow on YouTube like any other channel. And with this in mind, until tomorrow, I wish you all to have a wonderful day.